Well, guys, 2017 is upon us. I hope you all had a nice Christmas and a nice New Year's there. It's time for a face-off video to start this year off. Hopefully this time this video doesn't get lost to a failing SSD. Um, in this video I decided I wanted to do a comparison between AMD's K5 and Next Gen 686, or better known as the K6 processor. So, that's what I did. I put those two processors up very nice and gently together in the video, and we'll see which one actually ends up winning this test. We're going to be looking at uh, PR rating and also clock for clock performance here. So, you don't want to miss this because I don't know if anyone's ever actually done something like this, but if they have, oh well, it's probably lost by now. Will the K5 clock for clock be able to beat the K6? And how well does the K5's PR rating hold up to the K6? Well, we'll find that out in this video, so let's get started, shall we? For quite a long time now, I've had a theory that AMD's in-house design of the K5 Kryptonite processor was actually superior to the design of the next-gen 686, which later became the K6 processor after AMD's acquisition of next-gen. The K5 processor is an interesting design. It is a RISC-based core that has to convert Intel x86 CISC instructions to RISC instructions on the fly. Prior to the K5 PR120 processor, the K5's design ran the processor at full clock speed of the PR rating, stamped on the top of it there. However, starting with the 120, the internal clock speed deviated from that of the PR rating. As an example here, both the PR100 and the PR133 processor runs at 100 MHz, but if you look at the PR rating increase of 33, it implies that AMD tweaked their design early on to yield a 33% performance per clock increase over the initial design of the K5, which in my book is a pretty substantial increase in performance there. The K5 came with 24 kibbles and bits of level 1 cache, 8K of instruction plus 16K for data, and it topped out at 133 MHz. The 133 megahertz variant was labeled as a PR120 processor, and these chips were not produced in large enough quantities to be around very much nowadays anymore. They're a very rare processor. So I will be overclocking my PR166 chip to a PR200 for these tests when we pit it up against the K6200. The next gen 686 design had a larger pipeline stage which allowed the design to scale in clock speeds beyond what the K5 was able to achieve at that point. The downside to increasing pipeline stages is it reduces the performance per clock of the processor, but as clock speed is what sold processors back then, not performance, and plus AMD was falling behind Chipzilla in the clock speed wars, AMD quickly jumped on the next gen 686 design and tweaked the chip to work on standard socket 7 platforms, and they added their own MMX instruction sets while they were at it too. Now, I've used both of these processors, and I really like both of them. They both are really good chips. However, I think AMD might have done themselves a disadvantage in the long run by jumping on NextGen's design so early on instead of tweaking uh, more clocks out of their existing K5 design and adding MMX to it, and just kind of letting the K6 bake for a while in the oven, you know, letting them tweak it out a little bit, get a little bit better performance out of it before they finally released it. But we'll have to find out in these tests just how well AMD's K5 competes against the later K6 processors, and we will see if there was any more advantage to the K6 besides higher clock speeds and MMX. The K6 does have another advantage with its 64 kibbles and bits of level 1 cache, 32K instruction plus 32K of data, which should help boost performance. I mean, it's almost, not quite, but almost three times as much level 1 cache as the K5, so there should be an advantage just because of that. I will be comparing the K5's PR performance rating here to that of the K6's actual clock speed. Then I'll switch gears here and take a look at the actual clock for clock comparison between K5 and K6 to see which one of them has more balls per clock. While these tests will be the usual slew of DOS benchmarks, they should still provide somewhat uh, representative numbers comparison here or whatever to uh, what they would do in Windows or pit it together. Though I will do a Windows face-off for these processors at some point in the future. I've just got to get that whole set up. I predict the results will still be more mm, more like they are under DOS. Um, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of difference, but it could very well be. I don't know. I, I could be wrong about that. It, 
it'd be interesting to see nonetheless. You know, maybe the K6 will have more advantage in Windows than K5, but I, I'm not really sure anyway. The motherboard I'm using for these tests is my Asus uh, SP95V Baby AT motherboard, which has a uh, 512K of level 2 cache. And this is running the SIS 5598 PCI chipset, which is surprisingly a very good performing chipset. I've never given this chipset much consideration over the years, or to this motherboard being considered a performance board, till I saw Phil using his ATX version of this board in his tests, and it made me rethink my opinion of this chipset as being a cheap budget, low performance, all-in-one solution for a Socket 7 uh, motherboard. I mean, this thing's got VGA on board. So to sum it up here, the K5 processor has a few disadvantages to the K6. It has nearly a third less kibbles and bits for its level 1 cache. It doesn't have MMX, which isn't going to matter in these tests. And it also will be operating at slower clock speeds than the K6. As a matter of fact, once you get up to PR200, well, the K5 has about a 66 megahertz disadvantage to the K6200, so that's pretty significant. So let's find out how these processors compete at the PR rating versus the K6's actual clock speed and see uh, how the K5 gets along here. All right, to start off with here, I'm going to take a look at the K5 PR133, and I'm pitting it up against the K6 running at 133 megahertz here. You can see the K6 is edging out the K5 just slightly here in top bench with 385 on the scoreboard and 367 for the K5. Pretty close, but uh, K6 is edging it out here a little bit. In Superscape here, you can see yet again the K6 processor is edging out the K5, 119.4 for the K5 and 157.6 for the K6 processor. Pretty healthy uh, pretty healthy difference there. PC player, 36.2 for the K5 versus 45.7 for the K6. In Doom, the K6 is pulling out uh, 72 frames per second here. While in this test, the K5 PR133 is actually performing faster here it basically 76 frames per second. And for Quake, the K6 is yet again edging out the K5 with 25 frames per second even on the board and nearly 23 for the K5. So really the K5 is not trailing behind that far given the fact that it does have a 33 megahertz disadvantage at this point. It's still holding its own fairly well there. And then we get to speed sys here, you can see that the K5 is scoring 104.94 on the chart there. 149.08, that's an impressive lead there for the K6. However, you can see that the K5 processor actually has a little bit higher memory bandwidth going on there. Some interesting results showing up on the uh, memory test there, some really interesting patterns going on there. Looks like I'm looking at an oscilloscope or something right there. K6, on the other hand, seems to have a little bit more of a steady uh, test going on there. The lines are looking uh, nice and smooth. And it's kind of an interesting result there from the K5. I, I wonder why it's doing that. Now let's go ahead and take this K5 166 processor to the max here and overclock it. And in top bench here we're getting a score of 396 versus 415 for the K6, now running at 200 megahertz. Still, once again, you know, close there. Not, not too far behind for the K5, but the K6 is still edging it out here. But at this point, we do have a 66 megahertz disadvantage for the K5 at this point. So, you know, it's looking pretty good there, actually, with that much of a disadvantage in clock speed there, not to mention it's level 1 cache being a third as much, you know. I mean, it's Still holding its own very well there. I'm very impressed with the K5 so far in these tests. In Superscape here you can see the K5 PR200 is woefully behind the K6200 here. 136.4 versus 200.5. That's an impressive number for the uh, K6200 there. 43.7 for the K5 versus 60.3 for the K6200. Again, there's a pretty big difference right there. K5 is not looking good at this point. That 66 megahertz disadvantage that it has is really starting to show here. 
Doom seems to really like the K5. It's enjoying 89 frames per second versus 86 frames per second for the K6 200 here. Kind of interested as to why Doom likes the K5 so much, but we get to Quake here and you can see that once again the K5 is falling woefully behind the K6, 28 frames versus 34 frames per second there. All right, so let's take a look at Speed Sys here and you can see that it's scoring basically 140 for the K5 and uh, basically 229 for the K6. So once again, that 66 megahertz is really putting the K5 at a disadvantage here at this point. You can see that once again we still got that jagged sawtooth pattern going on there in the memory tests and you can see that the uh, memory tests on the uh, K6 have gone up although the memory bandwidth has stayed the same. But at this point it's testing level 1 and level 2 caches right here so it's kind of an interesting result there actually. I don't know why it's doing that sawtooth pattern. That, that might explain actually some of the kind of odd performance you get out of a K5. I, I'm not sure what that actually means there, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at these two processors uh, side by side at the same clock speed of 133 megahertz. All right, so now I'm going to be taking a look at these two processors running at the same clock speed of 133 megahertz. And just for shits and giggles, I am also including the benchmarks results that I took of this motherboard with the uh, Intel Pentium MMX processor also running at 133 megahertz just for fun. So let's see how uh, Chipzilla gets along in this test here. So we've got uh, 397, the K5 running at 133 megahertz, 384 for the K6 running at 133 megahertz, and 374 for Chipzilla MMX running at 133 megahertz. That's pretty funny actually. I get a kick out of the fact that that Intel Chipzilla processor is behind on this test. There's a certain satisfaction about that. K5 136.4 versus 157 for the K6 versus 138 for Chipzilla right here. <laughs> and once again you can see it, Chipzilla is falling behind here on PC Player. 40.7 versus 43.7 for the K5 versus 45.7 for the K6. So in this particular test, AMD K6 is the winner, although not by much. And once again, Doom, you can see that the K5 is 89 frames per second versus 72 frames per second once again for the K6 running at 133 megahertz. And right smack dab in the middle there is Chipzilla MMX scoring 76.4 frames per second. So you can see once again that Doom absolutely loves the K5 processor. Hell yeah. And no surprise here, folks, that Chipzilla is taking the lead at 34.1 frames per second, showing its strength on the uh, Pentium optimized instruction set that exists uh, within Quake there, and its stronger floating point unit. However, the K5, 28 frames per second, you know, it's faster than the K6 is, not by much, 3 frames per second, but I mean, that's... Uh, that could be the difference between fragging somebody and somebody fragging you, so it might be worth it. I am actually impressed how well the uh, Intel Chipzilla MMX133 chip performs here. And the best benchmark today of them all, Speed Sys here with the Pentium 133 MMX scoring a measly 100.62 on the benchmark test there. Although it's turning uh, impressive memory bandwidth numbers at that speed. See the K6 is 149.08 versus 139.98 or I'll say 140. So yeah the K6 is kind of sort of edging it out here but not by much. And of course the Chipzilla processor is looking really pathetic in this benchmark, so I like this benchmark. I like Chipzilla looking just as pathetic as they really are. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. Chipzilla, there's a lot of stuff they did back then, and oh, there's a lot of there's a lot of garbage going on back then with Chipzilla. So it's it's in, it's pleasurable for me to see Chipzilla fall on its ass on some of these tests compared to its. Uh, 
uh, main rival AMD back then who they were giving a hard time to not to mention Cyrus but AMD they were they weren't uh, friends back then but yeah so anyway yeah and as you can see this was all ran with the Diamond Viper V330 which I forget failed to mention early on in this video but you know that's my I, I like that card. It's a good card all right, so I think this is going to wrap up these benchmarks here, and we'll come back to me uh, blabbering on camera. So this is a test I've been wanting to do for a few years now, and I think we finally have at least some pretty good evidence that the K5 processor design is superior to the K6, but not in every case. I'd say in enough cases, though, to call it superior. Personally, that's my opinion. I'm not really biased towards the K5, well, maybe I am. I don't know. I do like it. But anyway, um, I love to see it whoop the crap out of Chipzilla. Yeah, I like those benchmarks a lot. I wish it did it every time. Now, um, I did all these tests on the 586HX Gigabyte motherboard. I found the K6 processor to be lacking in performance on that board by a significant amount. In fact, the K5 actually whooped the K6's ass in every test by a significant amount. That's how much of a difference there was. Quake was like 29 frames per second on that board with the K6 processor. It might have something to do with the fact that the BIOS recognized that processor as a K5, not a K6. The BIOS is a little bit out of date on that board. So when my SSD crashed, I was about 70-75% done editing that video, and I thought, you know... I know the results for the K6 are under par what they should be, so I decided to just rerun them and I decided to use the Sys chipset board for the test. I'm very impressed with the Sys chipset. Um, <clears throat> over the years I thought it was just kind of one of those cheap, cheerful, gets the job done kind of chipsets for low budget systems. It actually doesn't do that bad. I would say it's at least comparable to Intel's TX chipset in performance. And uh, <clears throat> it's not really all that great as far as the BIOS options go. There's enough in there to please you, but I've seen better. But anyway, um, yeah, so this was an interesting test. I think the K5 won it personally. I love it when K5 kicks the crap out of Intel chipzilla. It's always a good benchmark when that happens. <clears throat> it's just too bad that uh, Intel's processor still whoops the butt in uh, Quake. That's uh, the only downside to Intel chip processors. But uh, heavily optimized uh, Quake uh, coding there they put in there for uh, the Intel Pentium processor, floating point unit, stuff like that. So anyway, this was a fun test. Thank you guys very much for watching. See you again right here on the Wayback Tech Channel. Peace out, everyone.